right. Um, good win uh, for our guys. Um, really proud of uh, all of their work and their effort over the last several um, weeks and months uh, to get to this this moment. And uh, got a chance to, uh, to to win 51 to three and play really well uh, in some spots. Uh, had several uh, superlatives. We played 84 uh, players uh, tonight and um, really uh, proud of uh, the defense. Thought the defense from start to finish really uh, played outstanding. Again, um, six sacks, nine tackles for loss, uh, four, you know, six turnovers and scored a touchdown. First time I think we've had six turnovers in a game in, since 2003. Uh, we only had four, uh, six fumble, forced fumbles last year, and we had four tonight. So really, I, I loved uh, how aggressive and confident our guys were moving around, flying to the ball, and uh, being aggressive and knocking the ball loose. Uh, fantastic job uh, by the defense. Uh, Coach Alley got a game ball in his, in his debut. It's pretty solid uh, day right there. If we don't have a penalty, then you never know. what We might have got a shutout. Uh, but really just liked our positioning overall, uh, the cleanliness uh, and aggressiveness that we played with on defense. Um, our offense, again, they scored six of the first eight drives. They scored. Uh, there's some, you know, we created a lot of short fields. You know, the four turnovers in the first half, they converted it to two touchdowns and two field goals. So had a few um, issues from a, a getting into a, a good rhythm um, at times on offense. I thought Jackson played really efficiently. Again, he was uh, 17 of 25, but he had four four drops. Got to make those plays, and one of them uh, would have went for a ways. And, uh, but I thought he played efficient. There's a few uh, decisions, whether you give it or throw it, uh, that we got to get cleaned up. Um, but I uh, thought he played uh, efficiently. It was good to um, get uh, uh, Mike Hawkins uh, in the game and that group of guys. And we were able to play a bunch of young guys, both at the skill position and the guys up front. thought that, again, they did some really good things. Again, we, we went in with a really simple, clean game plan uh, structurally and scheme-wise. We felt that's what we needed to do to in order to win. And uh, But got a lot to, to clean up. Again, had some substitution issues uh, in some of our special teams un units. But Keltner was uh, three out of three, a 50, 42, and a 24-yard uh, field goal. Uh, Luke punted the ball well, averaged 43.8. I thought outside of one, we probably could have filled, fielded one one punt uh, that we let hit the ground, but I thought Peyton did a nice job uh, as well. Our coverage units were pretty good. And uh, overall, again, thought it was a, a good win with plenty of things that we uh, can do to get better on, uh, in all three phases. And uh, so good to get some, something on the tape. Uh, you know, so we have some video evidence of both good and bad and be able to learn and grow and get better as a team and improve. And as we move, you know, here in the next, uh, you know, moving forward every every week, things are uh, going to get a little bit more challenging uh, with our opponents in, in front of us. But uh, playing tonight gives us an opportunity to get an extra day of, of uh, rest and recovery and uh, uh, preparation uh, for Houston in a week. So right. open it up. Uh, Branson and, and Jewel both left with injuries. How are those guys doing? Um, again, well, I think Branson got a uh, got a uh, ankle sprain, and uh, so we'll we'll see uh, where that is, and and uh, and then Jalil's going to have surgery. Uh, he ended up breaking his foot, and uh, so he'll get a screw put in that, and that's a six to eight week uh, recovery uh, for him. Hate it for him. Had a great great camp, and. Um, but uh, uh, hopefully we'll get him back here uh, in a month and a month and a half or so. Is that the same foot in spring? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bro, what was the uh, biggest thing that stood out to you on the, the defensive front and the way they played? The pressure? Just yeah, vertical, uh, active, stayed on our feet. And did a really nice job in block recognition, squeezing and condensing gaps. Some of our movements that we did up front, I thought they they played with great pad level. Uh, and again, you don't ever want to 
you know, well, that was so and so that we're playing. You know, it really doesn't have anything to do with them that we're the things that I'm talking about. It's it's us. But I just thought we were sure of what we were doing. We played with a really good pad level, excellent with our hands. We got a lot of knockback, and uh, we made it hard for them to to run the ball downhill. They tried to run downhill. They had some counters where they're pulling two people. They got the ball outside on a jet sweep early, but really, other than that, weren't able to get outside. And then we turned a corner route loose uh, another time. And there's plenty of things. We had a guy wide open on Jaden Hardy's interception that uh, we got a, and we're in a man call and, and we just don't cover him. He goes vertical right down the middle of the field. So there's some things we got away with. Um, and so we're not beating our chest, but I do think that we've we played for the most part. We had really good positioning for the most part. We we covered the guys we we're supposed to cover. Uh, played with pretty good technique all night, but I thought I loved the depth of what we were able to to, to play in the game. I don't know exact uh, number count. I think it was 42 ish uh, is what we played on defense. 84 overall. Grant, thoughts on the run game today and just adjusting with the Marcos situation. Yeah, again, um, I thought, again, we, you know, DeMarco, uh, he handles substitutions and whatnot, but uh, and knows who can do what type of runs uh, the right way. So I thought our guys were, you know, well schooled on that. You know, again, I thought sometimes we had some really um, good runs called that we pulled it out of the belly and chose to throw it um, that we, uh, we can learn from. But uh, I thought we were overall efficient, you know. Uh, not amazing, but overall we were efficient. And um, what we, I don't know what we averaged per rush. I don't see that anywhere here. But uh, we averaged just under six yards of play for the night, so solid. Yeah, you can see uh, his explosiveness, and um, he's got great power. Runs through trash, and uh, he's got excellent top end speed. Really good natural instincts. You know, carrying the ball. What about Dion Burks? Obviously, just one game here, but what what could you foresee with this guy in your offense? Yeah, again, uh, first time ever. Sooner players caught three touchdowns in his in his debut, and uh, and again for for Jackson throwing him uh, the ball. That was four touchdowns for Jackson. That's the most in a first career home start for an Oklahoma player since 1999. Uh, but again, Dion did fantastic. Dion did exactly what he's done since he's been here. He's he's explosive. You know, he makes. The Things happen. He knows how to, to get open and uh, is really, really competitive. And uh, so it was good to get him going tonight. Brent, the, the offense uh, being kind of up and down at times tonight with so much newness, whether it's the offensive line, quarterback, coordinators even, is it safe to say that you kind of have to be patient with that group as they get going? Well, I think all of it, yeah. I mean, um, I think you know we went in with a really uh, plain vanilla uh, game plan. Uh, from a strategy standpoint, and again, there's some things that we'll, we'll be able to get better in some of our RPO world uh, that can help us uh, as well. But uh, and then again, you know, we lost uh, Branson uh, early. I thought Garen came in and, and he did a really nice job. And then, uh, you know, guys picked up the slack, you know, for, for Jaleel as well. But, uh, you know, we did what we needed to do, 151 to 3, had great game control. And, uh, and again, a lot that we can still improve. I thought, again, I thought our tight ends played well, Jake and Bauer and uh, uh, Cade McIntyre and Caden Helms got in. So that was really good to see uh, as well. Brent, you, uh, you mentioned Tyler Keltner um, and the three for three. What was it in training camp that allowed him to separate or at least take a step forward? It just there's a body of work and not just the training camp. There's summer, there's spring. It's, it's, it's a body of work. And, uh, you know, he has shown with his career, you know, he, he get into games, he, he made most of them. And uh, so he had a good track record that way. But Zach had a great camp too. And as I said, it uh, we went in, just made a decision. Uh, this is what we were going to do. And, and uh, you know, uh, glad for uh, Tyler uh, stepping up and executing, you know, really nice job in his debut. You what said it was a Jackson? vanilla offensive game plan. Is that more based on opponent or just getting your opponent. guys settled in? Opponent. Mm -hmm. but what did you think of Jackson's just decision making and things? Again, like I said, he uh, his numbers again just th easy pitches and catches. He had four drops, so you're looking at being 21 to 25, and and we threw the ball. We only pushed the ball down the field just a couple of snaps. Um, 
uh, I think we threw two go balls on a couple of RPOs, and and we we hit a deep deep one, beautiful shot, you know. To was that to, was that for Rook on the over route, and uh, they had a, some really excellent throws uh, tonight. But we didn't uh, push the ball down the field uh, tonight, and um, so again that was by uh, design and uh, to a certain degree, and uh, but. And again, I th like I said uh, earlier, I think there's a couple of times where he could have uh, put it in the belly uh, in, instead of throwing it. And then there's a time or two that some of the things they were doing structurally on defense uh, where he could have kept it uh, as well. So, but overall, I thought it was, it was good. Brent, how did the helmet communication work with the offense and defense? It was good. No, no issues. How good was it to see Andrell get back out there? Yeah, it was good. You know, he's worked really hard, and and uh, and so that'll do a lot for him. You know, and his his confidence, and you know, usually it takes you about a year to get back to where you were. You know, from that that ACL, and that's mentally and it's physically. You certainly get the the green light uh, usually around that you know six to eight month uh, period, depends on if you had any setbacks and whatnot. So it was great to get him back going. He's long, super explosive, and look forward to getting him, you know, into the uh, the offense full time. You got Michael Hawkins some run, some runs that planned these first couple games, maybe to get his feet wet a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and Mike Mike's done well and he's looked really good. What you saw tonight's kinda how he looked in how he's looked in, in practice as well. So Mike's Mike's a really good player. Uh he's got a great future ahead of him and uh you know, we really feel that it's important that we, we, we get him some experience. Otherwise you get two really young quarterbacks uh at the one and the two and, and uh when we don't have a lot of experience there, so uh we feel like we're we're gonna know, need to be able to have both guys ready to play. Do you need someone to step up for Jalil? And, re and replace him, or are you just going to spread out more more yeah, I mean, I, starters? Or? We'll see how it all works out when it's said and done. But we do have, you know, a, a good group of young players uh, there as well. Um, got a good receiver room. You know, at some point you can't just keep taking hits. That's two really good players. You know that you you've lost there. But uh, we do feel good about a group of guys that will be able to take up the slack. What does having Bauer and the tight end passing game, what, what does that potentially add to your offense? Yeah, I mean, I think it just gives you balance and it allows you to uh, do some things both in the run and the pass. I mean, these these are a group of guys, they, they're good at blocking and, uh, uh, you know, they can uh, – give us an advantage from that standpoint and then attack in the middle of the field uh, outlets, things of that nature. Um, these are really good athletes. They understand the passing game. They understand spacing. and uh, So that will, again, be a group of guys that's going to be able to help us have really good balance inside and outside run and pass. Brent, what does a performance like Grayson Holmes tonight do for him to kind of get out to a fast start after really can't Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's going to do a lot from a confidence standpoint. Obviously, trust uh, getting more and more opportunity. I think it'll probably even create. And, and Grayson's been great. Um, he's really started to focus. You know, the last six months on what he wants to do with his with his career and his opportunity. And and he's always been a great guy. He's just being serious about his his opportunity and uh, putting the weight on, knowing what to do, being consistent, showing up every day. And you know, we've said this. He's one of our best pass rushers. He's incredibly uh, disruptive, um, super athletic, twitchy, if you will, and uh, plays with a lot of passion. And so. Um, I'm anxious to, to watch him and several other guys to see, you know, if he was a complete player, you know, tonight, both the run and the pass. And that that uh, tip interception that Dolby made for Walker, mm -hmm. uh, was he doing that on purpose or was that just luck? You think? <laughs> no, I think it was a PBU. He's going for the ball. And uh, we, we were showing a, a mugged up look and, and uh, showing the quarterback one thing. We had some real tight windows, uh, you know, I think if I can't remember, but I think Dolby was on the outside like this and tried to reach back in, and, and it just happened to pop up. But it, that definitely wasn't planned. If Dolby had an opportunity to catch it, he certainly would have. He's not, he's not that good of a teammate, but he's active and disruptive. Uh, it was great to see. Is Woody healthy? Hundred percent. We held Woody. Could have gone. You know, he's a little bit sore. And um, same thing, Eli Bowen. Um, uh, could have played, but it just wasn't a game that you need him to play. And just if we if we have a, a 
couple of guys like that that we decided to hold here at the last, you know, in the last day or so. Same with Gentry for the most part. I mean, he yeah, just again, just why risk him? You know, he's and that was three weeks ago that he hurt his shoulder. He's completely cleared, um, but we and his strength is uh, excellent. He's back, but we've um, we've done a little bit of live. Uh, I say live, a little bit of contact and practice. Uh, in practice for gentry uh, tackling uh, in controlled setting but not all the good on good stuff and some of the scrimmage stuff that we've done he's not done that so we've wanted to progress him back into it is Jake Taylor in that same boat too yeah Jake was he's available we just <clears throat> he's missed a few practices and we wanted to uh, work on his stamina if, if we could and I felt like tonight we'd be able to do that so he'll be back and ready to roll next week who do you work with uh, Jalil out? Is that Kearney? Or Excuse me? Who do you work with with Farouk being out? Who do you work that position? Again, it's going to be a handful of guys, um, Iron. You know, uh, we got some really good young uh, receivers. Uh, you know, Petway will will have a chance uh, as well. He can play inside and outside. Uh, you know, Reagans is a guy that can play outside and inside uh, as well. KJ Daniels, uh, Ivan Carrion, Kearney. Those are all guys that we, they've been getting reps since the spring and have shown, uh, again, nobody's been perfect, uh, no expectation of that, but these are all guys that we feel like, you know, are going to have a real chance for. So that group of guys. Coach, what did you think about the special teams unit not giving up a long run and scoring the one Special day? teams? Yes, sir. Yeah, as I said earlier, we had a few substitution, you know, Bauer uh, playing a lot, you know, and uh, so he forgot uh, on a field goal or extra point uh, one time and then had a punt issue as well. And um, but uh, outside of a couple of substitution uh, things are going to happen when you're playing a lot of guys. I thought overall it was pretty good, you know, and it was good to get some live stuff on tape uh, against somebody else that we can coach and correct and, and learn from. Brent, you mentioned Zach Alley got the, the game live yep. of the game. Just how maybe how important was it today to get him just further settled in and into, into this position? I mean, I, I guess it would have been not as good if he would have gave up, you know, 38 points and, uh, you know, no turnovers and stuff like that. I don't know. I mean, it was great. Yeah, I mean, it's good. You know, we're – Things went like we hoped it would go, and uh, but I, I just love the aggressiveness, uh, forcing the turnovers, a lot of hard hitting, and really getting overall uh, excellent positioning and depth of guys that knew what to do. And uh, so all the coaches have done a really nice job of getting guys ready. But it was great for Zach and, you know, moving forward, to, with those guys had confidence going in uh, to the game and certainly will take the confidence out, knowing, that, again, you got to start over and uh, learn a new DNA, a new opponent. And uh, But uh, like I said, he, he got the game ball and they – Put him up top, and he swag surfed all over the the. Uh, I don't know. I think I think that's what it's called, but in the locker room. So they had some fun. It was good. Did he call the whole game? Yeah. One last question. It's just one game, but I mean, it feels like defensively, you guys have just made leaps and bounds from kind of where you mm -hmm. first started as you know, taking over this. I think. I. I mean, probably that's accurate to some degree. But, and we still got a long ways to go. Um, you passed the first test. I'm not trying to give coach speak. Uh, there's a lot stiffer challenges uh, in the immediate future, and um, I think everybody in the locker room understands that. But, but that at the same time, we're not apologizing for playing well tonight. You know, despite uh, you know what we're playing against, what they can do, what they, you know, weren't good at, things of that nature. So, uh, you know, mission accomplished, if you will. And again, this this is going to be a season, again, that pre presents a lot of, um, you know, you know, stronger challenges. And, and we're going to figure out a lot about who we are and what we want to be. But, you know, as I've said before, you know, things that we didn't do well last year, we didn't play consistent. We gave up way too many big plays. And, uh, you know, I think that we're better equipped uh, to handle. If we if we had some guys get banged up last year, we had some guys get banged up at linebacker, at safety, at corner. And, uh, you know, I really like where we're at from a competitive depth standpoint and what we've seen up to this point in time. Thank you, Coach. Okay, appreciate everybody.